Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul is joining us now live from the campaign trail in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. All right, well, let's talk about it. Uh, what, how, did, how could this happen? Because I've gone through some of these old uh, Ron uh, Paul newsletters, uh, and it's got your name bannered on the top, and some of these comments, as we just heard from Brian's piece, are pretty shocking. Yeah, it is, and of course it's been rehashed a long time, and it's coming up now for political reasons. But everybody knows in my district that I didn't write them, and I don't speak like that, and I, nobody has heard me ever say anything like that. And I've been reelected time and time again, so everybody knows that uh, I don't participate in that type of language. But the point is, is when you bring this question up, you're really saying you're a racist, or are you a racist? And the answer is no, I'm, I'm not a racist. As a matter of fact, Rosa Parks is one of my heroes. Martin Luther King is a hero because they practice the libertarian principle. Of of civil disobedience, nonviolence. Libertarians are incapable of being a racist because uh, racism is a collectivist idea. You see people in group. A, a civil libertarian like myself see everybody as an important individual. It's not the color of their skin that is important, as Martin Luther King said. What is important is the character of, of the individual. You know what is really interesting, though, and this might be behind this, because I, as a Republican candidate, probably am getting the most number of black votes and black supporters, and now that has to be undermined. And I do this because I attack two wars that blacks are suffering from. One, the war overseas. In all wars, minorities suffer the most. So they join me in this position I have against the war in Iraq. And what about the war on drugs? What other candidate will stand up and fret in the can and say, I would pardon all blacks, all whites, everybody who are convicted for nonviolent drug acts and drug crimes? And this is where the real discrimination is left finish this uh, because I got to get my message back because you put the other message out. Now, when, uh, uh, when the, if you want to look for discrimination, this is in the judicial system. 14% of the inner city blacks commit drug crime. 67% of blacks are in prison. That's discrimination. That's the judicial code, code that I am attacking. And that is not racism. What I defend is the principle of libertarianism where we never see people who belong to a group and every individual individual is defended and protected because they're important in the individual, not because of their color of skin, but of their character. So I am the anti-racist because I am the only candidate, Republican or Democrat, who would protect the minority against these vicious drug laws. Uh, 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 Congressman, uh, there's a lot of material there, but let me just try to figure out how did this stuff get in these Ron Paul newsletters? Who wrote it? Well, well... I have no idea. Uh, have, have you ever heard of a publisher of a magazine not knowing every single thing? The editor is irresponsible for the daily activities. And people came and go, and there were some people that were hired. I don't know any of their names. I do not, absolutely honestly, do not know who wrote those things. But I do know there was a transition, there were changes around, and uh, it. To, to me, it's been rehashed. The, this is the politics of it all. If it were important enough, why didn't the people in my district who have heard this for these 10 years or so, it, it came up and people believe me. Why don't you believe me and just say, look, it's in there, it's bad, I recognize that, I had a moral responsibility, but that doesn't mean that you can, you know, indirectly cha charge me as being a racist, and that is what is being done, and yet I am the most anti-racist because I don't see people in collective groups, and I, I practice, and you know, right now, even before this thing broke, guess when our next fundraising day, our next super day, we raised four million one day, six on the day, the next one's on Martin Luther King holiday. I mean, this is it. Martin Luther King, Rosa Park, Gandhi, they're the heroes of mine in practice of civil disobedience to try to get the burden of government off, off our backs. And that's why I'm the one that protects the individual blacks who are in the city who are so, be, uh, so unfairly being treated and thrown in prison. That's the message that needs to be heard, and I'd appreciate somebody helping bring that out rather than nitpicking over something done many years ago, which I did not write. So you used to read these newsletters? Congressman? Not not back not back then. There might have been at times I would at, at times, but you know I was in a medical practice. I traveled a lot. I was doing speeches around the country. So very frequently, you know, I never did see these. Matter of fact, some of the things uh, you just read, uh, I, I wouldn't have recognized them. And, and and the point is, it's not part of my character. The point also is when people get charged, they usually have a clip. They never have a clip of somebody saying something, a slip of the tongue or something, and then they're blasted the kingdom come. 
nobody has ever heard me say that. They know those are not my thoughts. And therefore, the people have not rejected me in Texas. And in a way, this is a bit of a witch hunt. I, I know there's reason. I don't say that you're unjustified in asking the question. But you also have to think of the motivation behind this. And maybe, maybe this is part of the anti-Ron Paul deal. You know, I got excluded from the debates the other night. And uh, maybe, maybe this is part knockdown Ron Paul because he's gaining grounds with the blacks. I'm getting more votes right now and more support from the blacks because they understand what I'm well, talking I, I, about and they trust me. I got to tell you, Congressman, you and I, we've talked a lot over these past several months. And when I saw these newsletters, I, I didn't know anything about them until I saw that article in the New Republic. I was pretty shocked because it didn't sound like, certainly didn't sound like the Ron Paul that I've come to know and our viewers have come to know all this time. I just want to be clear because this is a chance for you to respond. You repudiate all of these racist comments, all of the, the slurs that are contained, even though it contains the name Ron Paul uh, in these new newsletters. Well, the most important thing is anything I've ever said in my life has repudiated that for years and years and years. So I do repudiate everything that is written along those lines and what I heard tonight. And like I say, I've never read that before. If you asked me to dig up a copy of that, I wouldn't have the vaguest idea. That's how unimportant it was to me. But obviously it is important. It needs to be ironed out. In many ways, uh, Wolf, I think I should thank you for bringing it about so I could clarify this and make sure everybody knew where I stood on this position because it's obviously wrong. Nobody, people who know me, nobody is going to believe this. Absolutely nobody. Just like you said, you've known me for a good many years and good many interviews, and that's just not my language. That's not my life. I mean, uh, I, I honor and respect the, civ the, uh, the civil rights movement and the civil disobedience, and right now, I, I really think that people have to think about the real discrimination in this country today has to do with the drug laws, and what other candidate would take it upon himself to challenge this whole system of the judiciary, which is so unfair to the minorities. Now, talk about that. That's what I want right. the people to hear. And out of fairness, that message needs to get out. Ron Paul uh, joining.